So here's another sign that theaters are in trouble. The New York Post posted an article um, called AMC, uh, titled AMC Ent Entertainment Shares Tumble as CEO Holds Out for Avengers Rescue. This reminded me of what um, Box Office Mojo had put out a few months ago with Captain Marvel saying that, well, the they were re they were waiting on Captain Marvel to basically rescue the box office. Uh, here is the there. This is what I'm looking for. And this was posted on March 7th. So what we had in the theaters were Alita uh, was us, and I don't know if us was out yet. But anyway, How to Train Your Dragon and uh, a Lego Movie and all these uh, uh, Death Day to You too, things like that were out, and things were looking pretty grim. People were not coming out to see the movies, and um, as Box Office Mojo put it, eyes turned to Captain Marvel to give the 2019 Box Office a boost. So, I'm going to get back to this article right here and get more into this, but it's basically saying what you know I've been saying too, and that is that the Disney monopoly is pretty much keeping the theaters alive right now, and the more dependent that these theaters become on Disney, the more control that Disney gets over the, the amount of screens they get, the best show times they get. They basically become the theater's greatest shareholders. They become the loudest voice. And when you have that kind of power over, over theaters, someone like you might as well just own the theaters. And that's why I say we should probably just not be surprised when we see Disney movie theaters popping up. I know they would probably never call it a Disney theater because it would just look like a conflict of interest, but that's basically what we have. I'm going to read some of this now. Shares of AMC Entertainment tumbled as much as 10% Thursday, even as the theater chain CEO predicted Avengers Endgame would come to the rescue. Investors sent AMC stock down double digits in midday trading and down 7% at the close after the world's largest movie exhibitor posted a first quarter loss of $130.2 million, or $1.25 a share, more than double what Wall Street anticipated. Chief, Chief Executive Adam Aaron blamed greater... <laughs> this this, this kind of hurts right here. It hurts to read this. Chief Executive Adam Aaron blamed the greater than expected loss on the first quarter flops like Alita Battle Angel. Why are they still calling Alita a flop? Cause it, it made 400 million. What did they, what more could you ask for? He also complained that this year's box office sales were being unfairly compared, compared to last year when Black Panther, another Marvel movie, the number three all-time box office hit was driving ticket sales. That really bothers me right there. Okay, because how much money does a movie have to make before it's no longer considered a failure? Alita made $400 million so far. You know, it, it climbed slowly. It wasn't exactly a, a, um, a runaway train. It, went very, it was a, the little engine that could. It chugged along slowly. And continue to, to, to gain money and to get repeat viewings and, and, it, and it's gonna make his money back. It hasn't completely yet, but it will make his money back. So that movie is not a flop. But it almost seems like the way they frame it is that this movie failed, not just itself, but it failed the movie theaters. It failed the, the, the everything. Um, everything was depending on it and it just came up short. And that's that's really that's a really unfair way to look at Alita. You know, I, I don't know why that movie is getting that kind of. Um, it's not a Disney movie. It's not a Marvel movie. Why, why was that sort of expectation put upon that? Especially when you had all those articles coming out saying that the movie was going to bomb, right? They said it was going to flop. Wall Street had been expecting a loss of 54 cents a share on revenue of 1, 1.19 billion. AMC reported revenue 
agencies reported revenue fell to 1.2 billion, down 13.2 percent from last year, largely in line with Wall Street's consensus. Despite the larger than expected loss, Aaron said he still expects 2019 to be more profitable than 2018, thanks to Endgame's raking in a record two billion globally in its first two weeks. Um, Disney to the rescue. Even with the anticipated slow start to the year, we have been and continue to be quite bullish about the year about the full year prospects for AMC. Aaron said, Endgame continues to validate the appeal of co two customers of seeing high quality movies com communally in theaters on the big screen, he said. We are optimistic that the full year 2019 box office will be at, will be at least as strong as 2018. Theaters have high fixed costs, which creates a snowball effect when sales are low or slow. CFRA analyst Tuna is that a real name? <laughs> Tuna Amobi said. For example, the quarter's drop off in attendance forced AMC to spend 20.2% of its total revenue on rent compared to a rental expense in the year earlier quarter of 13.7%, Amobi said. The industry overall is suffering thanks to the growth of home theaters and easy access to streaming movie theaters, uh, streaming movies from services like Netflix and Amazon Prime. Domestic box office receipts generally were down 16.2% overall in the first quarter. AMC stock, which had fa which has fallen 18% in the last 12 months, closed down a dollar and two, um, well, point oh two a share, and um, to the end of to the end day to end the day at 13.663 whatever. Um, I have some things that I wanted to say here. The way um, Endgame made all of this money, to me, proves that the problem is not that the people are busy um, at home watching streaming or, let me highlight what they said here, or that, uh, what was it, oh, busy watching Netflix and Amazon Prime. The problem is that people have have been trained pretty well to expect a movie every three months that a movie is basically like following a TV show or whatever and they've decided that there's a since there's a steady stream of entertainment that's at least um, mediocre that this that's what they'll spend their money on you know this will be the the thing that everybody's seeing everybody's talking about so we'll go see this and they're not going to see the other movies so it's it, he kind of the the writer points out maybe unintentionally a little contradiction when he says here when he quotes Aaron that um, Endgame continues to validate the appeal to customers of seeing high quality movies communally in theaters. So there's uh, evidence at least that people still want to see movies together with other people in a theater. So the the idea that they um that the industry is suffering thanks to the growth of home theaters and easy access to streaming that is um not completely debunked but it ha it still has an effect yes but at the same time in game shows that people will show up and spend money and that the money is there to be spent so the question becomes, why are they spending it on Marvel and not spending it on other movies, such as these other movies that was named here and, and are accused of um, basically being at fault for AMC having such a, a, a poor year? Can you really blame those movies or is it just that people have decided that they're only going to see either titles that they recognize or or things that they have been more or less conditioned to to expect or conditioned to 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 support or to desire so back to this article from box office mojo by brad brevet the one that says uh i has turned to captain marvel to give the 2019 box office a boost i want to kind of highlight the point that i was making here uh, captain marvel i'm going to start right here 
uh, right here. Captain Marvel is the latest film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the first to center on a female superhero with Brie Larson starring in the title role. The film will launch in a March record. This is going to be a, a record for March. 4,310 theaters. 3,000 uh, um, DVD, I mean, I mean 3D, I said DVD, 3,000 3D locations, 400 IMAX screens, 750 premium large format screens, 250 D-Box 4D locations with previews beginning at 6 p.m. on Thursday night. Disney is anticipating a large de a debut around 125 plus million plus. Through, though tracking has been pushing higher all week and we're expecting something a, a bit higher as well um this is this is the point that i was making uh, disney can de can demand to have theaters before their movie in even comes out they can demand that they can have so many screens um it's not a, a case where a movie is doing so good that they're like we need more screens we need more screens they already just load up as many screens as possible so movies that should probably get more time in IMAX get pushed out movies that should be in theaters longer get pushed out as Variety and IndieWire um, both confirmed or supported what I was saying that Disney getting larger is not allowing other movies to really take hold um, that's basically all I wanted to, to share for this video. I don't want it to go on too long. Um, if you haven't, well, if you have seen the movie Elite Battle Angel, but you haven't yet reviewed it yet on Blu-ray.com, you know, take a minute to, to go review it. I think maybe you would be better off staying away from giving it a 10, 10 out of 10 because that even though if you, you feel like that like I do <laughs> like uh, on the level that I love it even though objectively it's probably more of an 8.5 but I love it as like a, a 10 uh, th th who knows they may end up discounting those like they may just feel like these are people trying to to manipulate the, the score so maybe just give it a 9 just, just to be safe maybe or you can go ahead and give it a 10. It doesn't matter. I don't know, but maybe, maybe it'd be alright. I just don't want to give them an excuse to, to delete anybody's reviews or ignore anybody's reviews. So, um, I'll, I'll leave the link so you can go look at those articles if you want to. And, uh, thank you all for watching.